Good evening. For seven years, PC Mark Kennedy walked, talked, and acted like an environmental protester, using his alias as climber Mark Stone to scale various protest sites and place himself at the heart of the action. He was handled by the National Public Order Intelligence Unit, but he apparently switched sides. And today, the trial of six green campaigners charged with an alleged plot to shut down one of Britain's biggest coal-fired power stations collapsed. Now, Nottinghamshire's Chief Constable has invited the Independent Police Complaints Commission to investigate why. So, who is the secret policeman? Richard Watson's exclusive report contains strong language. Mark Stone passed himself off as a committed environmental campaigner for seven years. He was deep undercover, so deep that he appears to have developed regret for betraying the friends he made. In a Newsnight exclusive, we have his story in his own words. Yeah, I mean, I really want to make amends. I mm -hmm. really do. Um, I can hate myself so much. I betrayed so many people. From taped conversations we've heard, Mark Stone is a broken man. No surprise, given the hall of mirrors he's been living in, with a long-term girlfriend here in Nottingham, and a family outside, so we're told. His partner was too upset to speak to us, we understand, but we have spoken to some friends of his, and they tell us that his case raises fundamental questions about policing protest and dissent in the UK. Newsnight was shown copies of his fake driving licence and passport, which prove he's been undercover since 2003. Hello. We've also obtained a recorded telephone call with the undercover policeman who was arrested along with 113 other campaigners in 2009. Apparently racked by guilt, he offered to help his old friends and confess to his role. Uh, I can help. In what way I can, then I'd like to. Why? Well, good. Um, so, so you're not you're not with the police now. No, I haven't been for a while. But you were with the well, you were with the police when we were all arrested on the one one four. Yeah. Yeah. Glen Eagles, Scotland, 2005. The G8 conference was targeted by anti-globalisation protesters and we're told Mark Stone was there. A year later, he was chaining himself to gates around Hartlepool Nuclear Power Station. He's the one on the left, wearing a mask and baseball cap, reading The Independent. He was at the heart of similar direct action across the UK, but by April 2009, he was planning the most audacious operation yet, the takeover of the huge coal-fired power station at Ratcliffe-on-Saw. Mark Stone drove an advanced party of campaigners in the pre-dawn. We spoke to an activist on the reconnaissance trip. It was on a dark morning almost two years ago today that Mark Stone drove myself and four other people who were investigating the possibilities of doing this action, drove us to this very spot and um, it was here that with his local knowledge he was able to give us uh, directions over to our targets over there. So he was playing a key role in this recce, wasn't he? He was driving, he was enabling us to get here, he was enabling us to get the footage and the, the things we needed to make the action happen and to plan the action. A few days before the planned takeover, campaigners noticed a heavy police presence outside the power station. In response to this, we thought, maybe we've been found out, maybe this action can't take place right now, maybe we'll have to tell everyone to go home. And then Mark Stone uh, volunteered to go and check out the power station himself to go and see if anything had changed. He went to the power station, he came back and he told us the police had gone, the police have gone. You can go for it, go for the action, the police have gone. On the day before the proposed action, more than 100 climate campaigners arrived at this school hall to be briefed on the plan. They say some had decided to take part, others wanted to sleep on it. They bedded down on the floor around midnight. If you imagine the scene, um, there's 114 people um, in this school. Uh, we've just had a whole day of briefings and um, people are bedding down for the night. Some are getting ready to take action tomorrow. Um, others, like myself, still kind of mulling it over. Am I going to do it or not? And then at that very moment, suddenly, um, we hear banging on the door. Um, 
then a smashing noise, the police are coming in, there's police vans parked all along this road and suddenly hundreds of police officers start pouring into the building and arresting everybody. We were actually being put into vans, taken away, put in a police cell um, simply for being at a meeting. It's really, really bizarre. 26 people were eventually charged with conspiracy to trespass. Meanwhile, suspicions were focusing on Mark Stone, and those close to him discovered documents which gave his real name Mark Kennedy. And those documents in turn led to others which confirmed that he was a serving police officer. This, this isn't the kind of thing you expect when you're going to meetings, you're talking about climate change, you have lots of people who are really concerned about the environment and we're talking about organising some sit-ins and some protests and, you know, you don't, you don't think that at that, at that kind of level of organisation there's going to be someone in the room who is a, is a trusted activist um, who is actually secretly a police officer who's working against you. A climate campaigner traced Mark Kennedy down in November and asked him to call. He replied by email. Hi, I'm in a very bad way at the moment. I'm so distraught about what has happened. I know you as a great guy. I'm very much alone and don't know where to turn. I see opportunities to do right, but don't know where to take them. He claimed he'd left the police, writing, I'm not in the police, so I can talk to who I want. Be aware, though, my communications are likely being monitored, which is ironic, hence email is safer. But PC Mark Kennedy apparently felt so guilty that he telephoned the protester who recorded the conversation. And these are the tapes. I owe it to a lot of good people to, to do something right for a change. It really hurts. I'm really sorry. Some of those charged with conspiracy to trespass argued there could not have been any conspiracy because there was no agreement to take action. People were still thinking about it in the school hall. Mark Stone appears here to agree. Yeah, let's, let's think about it. I mean, yeah, there's no, uh, I, I mean, for me, I like, there's no massive rush. I mean, to be honest, what, what you're saying is exactly the case. After Mark Stone's activist friends outed him in Nottingham, the solicitor for some of those accused saw this as a potential line of defence and immediately applied for full disclosure about Mark Stone's role. Now, we're told that the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, initially declined to give any such disclosure, but then faced with a formal court application just last week, folded the case. And today, as expected, the trial collapsed. No evidence was put forward against the six men. The CPS have issued some kind of statement suggesting that the existence of an undercover officer was not in any way linked to their decision not to proceed. What's, what do you make of that? I find this very surprising, actually. Surprising because, first, they haven't told us what the evidence was. Second, it's an enormous coincidence that, at the same time that we ask for an application to be heard by a trial judge, that this material be disclosed to us, the prosecution, like a click of their fingers, dropped the case. I would argue it was about intelligence gathering, I would suggest it was about trying to physically stop the climate movement, who they were scared were getting too powerful. But this certainly wasn't about protecting the public. There seems to be this very, very strange idea that it's important to throw huge amounts of resources and very dubious, dangerous and worrying tactics to try to silence protesters. Perhaps the most alarming fact for the campaigners is that Mark Kennedy seemed to confirm there are other police moles in the protest movement. I'm not the only one, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I mean... Not, not by a long shot. I'm not the only one, and... Yeah, it's like a hammer to crack a nut. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's fun in all different ways, and there'll always be justification, but, you know... And then you start looking at the way that the, the law is used, and it's manipulated, and it's... You just think, like, what the fuck? The Metropolitan Police refused to confirm or deny whether Mark Stone was an undercover officer, but pressure is mounting. Tonight, Nottinghamshire Police announced they're asking the Independent Police Complaints Commission to investigate the lead-up to the collapse of the case, and a separate inquiry into the conduct of the undercover operation is also being discussed.